Hello. Okay, this is my third attempt, <coughs> third attempt at this video. Um, not that you need to know, but um, I keep doing stupid things. And um, although the last one was a little bit amusing, it probably was a little bit too much on the um, me going wrong side. And it wasn't by frost, it was more that I accidentally hit F10, which stopped the recording, and I couldn't figure out how to carry it on. And also I forgot to say that, which I'll say now, is that these videos are sponsored by Autodesk, and um, I have to do that on everyone. So, okay, right. What I've been doing is here is making this sphere with um, lots of subdivisions, and then I'm gonna put a color map thing on it, color set, paint color, paint, <laughs> vertex, sorry paint vertex color tool and uh, I'll just flood that with um, I don't know how to make this just an RGB one I would have thought just doing that would do it but it didn't seem to work last time anyway flood it with black and what I'm going to do is bring these values into Bifrost in a minute so I'm going to paint on uh, an R and then a G, and then a B. And then we can use those values when we're in Bifrost. So, okay, um, on the tool, let's get rid of that. Don't wanna be on that. Right, okay, so um, Bifrost, make a graph, create graph, bring the sphere into the graph and plug that into there for the moment. If I do a watch point on here, you'll be able to see that that color set appears there because it's now a property of the object. It's something which we can use in Bifrost. And um, it's, it's, you know, we've created that BIF object as usual. usual from going from here to there, that creates that object. Don't know how to get the color map onto the BIF, but I'm not gonna do that on this one anyway. Um, just to show that this color set one is the thing that I just did, if I change that name uh, here from that to say, let's rename that to Paul's Paul map then down here you can see that it's down there it's alphabetical so that's why it's dropped down to there and yeah it's not an RGB it's an RGBA map so it's a vector for four elements um, which is you know, not really what I wanted but doesn't matter how we get those elements out of here is we have to do get geometry property because that's what it was that we were just looking at um, in that watch point thing so we did get geo get geo property and we plug that in property we want to get remember this is appears over here the property was what did I call it Paul's map I think Paul's map and um, you have to tell it what type it is which I found a bit weird, to be honest, because surely it would know. Sorry, that's not the right one. Um, I would have thought it would know, but it doesn't know. Um, so we need to plug that into there. I'm sure there's a very good reason for it, but I don't know what it is. And the type is a vector four. Okay. And then we can use that data to do something with. And... Um, but at the moment, that's a vector four. We just want it in its component parts. So to split it into its component parts, we do a vector four to scalar, and that gives us the single values which relate to the RGBA values. And we can use that to, um, you know, do something with. So let's make another push deformer. In fact, I have actually made a push deformer in the last one, so I'm tempted to just use that. But then I can't show you how to make a compound 
So, uh, so I'll do it from scratch again, <laughs> which is get point position, get point normal, and so we get that, we get that, we add them together, we then add node, that and that, and then we set point position. Stick that into there, and then that there, and that into there, which has made that bulge out because we've every single point has got a full one value on the normal. So we want to modulate that amount going in with a multiply. And you know what that's going to do is where this is black. It will be zero and where it's at one it will be at one and we can do it first of all well, let's try it on the red so if we plug the red in there and the output into um sorry let's just actually first of all let me um just break that connection we need that between there and there and we're going to use that now this confused me for a bit why is that thing suddenly disappeared and that gone red the reason being is because this is an array and we have to feed an array into here. And at the moment, because these are square and they don't have that little, let me just zoom in a bit actually. They don't have that little hat shape. These are just square. That means that they're single values rather than arrays. So this value here, I had to specify that it would be an array, which I do here. And then hopefully that's, yeah, so that's okay now. And now that's working, you can see, you can sort of see that that R is pushing out. But the reason why it has that sort of ghostly look is because <clears throat> the normals haven't been updated. Now in ICE, they just automatically update, but with, with the Bifrost, you have to tell it to update, which I guess is probably has advantages. Um, but you have to remember to do it. The v advantage could be, for example, ICE just does it behind the scenes whenever you need it. Um, but having control over that might be more efficient rather than it just doing it, you know, when maybe you don't need it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. Update mesh normals. So that goes in there. And then you'll see when that's plugged in, that looks a bit more um, what you'd expect. So we've got the R value going in there. If I change it to the G, then we get the G pushing out and the B value there. And obviously the A is not gonna do anything. Well, the, okay, it is because the alpha is at one for the whole thing, but um, you know, so I was going to show you also, that's probably that's probably it for this video. I'll just keep this a short one because I don't want to kind of do too many different things in one and make them all confusing. So this push deformer basically is composed of uh, I don't know, you could have the set point position in it or you could just have the values coming out. I probably just want the values coming out. Uh, we probably want to not have that inside it because you might want to push something that isn't just the point position. It might just be, you know, something that's had. I don't know. Anyway, you can choose. Well, no, let's just stick it in for the moment. You can choose what you want inside the compound, which, you know, which bits is useful to you. You select that and you go create compound or control G. And that will make a little, you know, so everything's inside there. You double click it and that's got all your stuff inside it. If you want to auto layout this, you can um, select everything and get auto layout selected. And that normally does quite a nice job of neatening stuff up. And you can see here we're inside this compound and you can go back up to the higher level there. Um, if I just click on that, I can call it um, push. 
And you can also change these names. So I might want to instead of X, which isn't particularly very, that X has come from here and it's just called it X. But I might want to call that multiplier, for example. Um, and that output, I might want to call it uh, pushed points or something like that. You can do, you know, and call it what you want, it doesn't really matter. Mesh is pretty obvious. And then when you're happy with that, you'd go, um, so you select the compound and you go publish push and you choose where you want it to be, which is you know probably just in user compounds or you can make your own folder and, and uh, do whatever you want. And then you go publish. I won't do publish because I've already got a push deformer um, that I made earlier. But if I get rid of that, I could go, um, hit tab, bring up push, and that's the one that I made earlier on. So I can just hook that up there, hook that in, hook that out to set point positions, and that's doing the same thing. Yeah. Oops. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I need to work on my Maya skills. So this um, this object here, I, I want to at some point try and figure out how to get the color values onto the Biff object. I'm not quite sure how to do that at the moment, but um, yeah, that, I think that's enough for for another video. These will get more complex as I go throughout the month, but um, hopefully that's clear. Anyway. Um, see you soon. Cheers. Thanks for watching as well. Bye.